Hi guys, JT here and today I'm bringing you my 8 choices in February's Play On The Go Bundle Fest Edition Bundle. Just know that these are my personal picks and I'll walk you through what they are and why they're worth picking up. So let's get into this. Choice number 1. Nuts. An indie mystery game about using cameras to track animatic squirrels. You play a recent graduate sent out to the woods to research squirrels. However, the squirrels are actually more mysterious than they seem, and you set up various remote cameras during the day to capture the mysteries, before reviewing it in your caravan at night. With each clue that you manage to find, more stories revealed to you, becoming stranger as you keep playing. You're alone in the woods with only a voice on the other end of the phone to keep you company. To progress through the game, you have to place cameras that will track a squirrel from a known starting point to an unknown finishing point. The squirrels will make their moves unpredictable, but they take the same route each night with some variations. On the first night, a squirrel may leap out of your camera's sight, and it is up to you to shift the position of your camera's just right, to capture more of the squirrel's movement each night. Rinse and repeat. There are a few hidden surprises, but most of the time you'll be backtracking the same track quite a bit. This game is basically a simulation of a filmmaker for National Geographic's Tracking a Squirrel. The surveillance mechanic is interesting, and once you get lucky with your camera placements, it does give you a sense of satisfaction. If you want to experience what it's like to be said National Geographic's film person, Nuts will be a game to play. Choice number 2. Home Sweet Home, a first-person horror game based around Siamese folklore. You play as Tim, and your wife Jane has been seeing supernatural entities, so much so that she's driven insane by it. One day, you wake up in an unfamiliar building. Unsure where your wife is, how you ended up in a creepy-ass building, or even where you are, you sought to escape this nightmarish place. As you explore your new surroundings, you'll encounter different ghosts from the Siamese folklore. You can also find various leaflets scattered around the area as you explore, so you can read about the background of these ghosts what they are called, and how to deal with them. It is a really interesting read and gets you into the little-known folklore of Siamese ghosts. All the while, you'll be stalked by a ghost girl in school uniform, armed with a box cutter, and who can teleport from one location to another via bloodstains. You cannot fight in this game, so when she shows up, you have to hide inside lockers or make sure that you have something in between you and the ghost to break her line of sight. There's also a giant ghost in this game that will jump scare you as you explore. When you aren't surrounded by ghosts, you can take your time and explore your surroundings as there are plenty of collectibles to obtain but the music and random sound effects in the environment will keep you on your toes and your heart pumping. The sound of the box cutter retracting and detracting from a schoolgirl's hands can also be very stressful to hear, because when she spots you, it's over, as she can seemingly teleport to your location to stab you with her box cutter. There are also puzzles in this game, but thankfully they aren't too difficult, as it is stressful enough feeling claustrophobic and alone with a bunch of ghosts trying to murder you. Home Sweet Home reminds me of Outlast, but with a lower budget, it isn't a long game, ranging from 2 to 4 hours, depending on how much exploration you're doing with the last section of the game being the scariest, so it is worth a playthrough. Choice number 3. The Vagrant, a 2D action RPG game. You play as Vivian, a traveling sellsword who provides her services to those who need them, in exchange for some coin. You're also searching for your father who left the family. In addition, there's a mysterious research possibly linked to his departure. Your quest slowly leads to some dark truths about your bloodline, and the curse that controls its fate and the evil behind it. The gameplay will basically have you going from point A to point B, murdering anything that is in your way with some boss fights thrown into each chapter. There is some exploration or some alternate paths, but it is far from being a metroidvania. Exploration can net you some treasure chests that will net you additional resources and keys to unlock new abilities. Hacking, slashing, and murdering is the name of the game though. Thankfully, combat is fun. Sword swinging feels weighty, yet the combat remains fast. You can learn a few combo tricks, use XP points to increase your stats through a sprawling skill tree full of passives, and upgrade your equipment with runes. However, the game could feel quite repetitive as you murder one enemy after another. In addition, the game is generally quite easy, with some bullet sponge enemies and bosses to deal with. Even though the game is not a perfect 2D hack and slash action adventure RPG, its 8 hour campaign still manages to remain enjoyable with some pretty interesting plot to keep you going. Choice number 4. Intravenous, a stealth game with some tactical hardcore gunplay. If that sounds contradictory, because it is. You can choose to either go into the game stealthily or guns blazing. You play as Steve Robbins, and you're out to avenge your deceased brother Charles. With nothing to lose, you'll be murdering drug-sniffing thugs who took your brother's life. The gameplay is sort of what you get if Splinter Cell has a baby with Hotline Miami. Presented in a top-down view, the game works almost as a twin-stick shooter with stealth mechanics, focusing on precise movements and execution. Enemies will react to things happening around them. A sudden light switch or floor creak will startle them, or a fallen ally will trigger an alert. Your health is not massive, so you have to be careful as you sneak your way through each kill. The gameplay can be quite addictive. If you're a stealth freak, you may find yourself going back to previous levels to perfect your stealth approach. You can go through a vent or blend in with the shadows, if you're found out, and a rain of bullets come flying at you, making it very similar to Splinter Cell. Intravenous is an enjoyable stealth game. It has nice replay value for those who want more stealth action. 
Learning new tricks might motivate you to replay all the levels, just to see how your newfound trick stacks up. The option to go stealth or guns blazing really makes the experience your own. Choice number 5. Blazing Beaks A roguelike game that rewards and punish greedy gameplay. The story goes that the peaceful life of Beak's world is unexpectedly disturbed by an invasion of monsters and beasts. The strongest and fearless heroes are chosen to blaze through the enemies and find the origin of evil. This game is challenging and unforgiving. Each Beak character that you can play as has different weapons, amount of health, and quirks that you can come to learn. As an example, the duck has much shorter range than other characters, but has 5 HP, while the penguin has a chance to spawn a copy of an enemy that it has killed, but it has a normal shooting range and only 4 HP. Each character you choose will dictate each of your playthroughs. The strange thing that you need to get through when you play this game is the dodging mechanic, as dodge rolling is an active ability that you can swap out for other abilities, rather than something that is pre-built into your character's moveset. Although it may be weird at first, the straightforward designs of the rooms and manageable movement speed of projectiles and enemies make it worth trading it out for other abilities. This game has something called the Greed System, where enemies you kill have a chance to drop artifacts that you can give to a crow in the shops. Each artifact contributes to a greed level. It is increased by how much danger it is to pick them up. They are basically optional modifiers to make the game more difficult, but the more difficult you make it, the more loot you'll obtain, like more items, hearts, coins, and sometimes even more artifacts. There are difficulty options, easy, normal, and hard. But even on easy, things can get very difficult with multiple modifiers through the greed system. This game is challenging, well put together with a very well done risk and reward system, and I would highly recommend picking it up in this bundle. Choice number 6. Elderborn. A first person melee action game with RPG character progression. You play as a generic barbarian, you can either be a man or a woman, and you're venturing into the city of Germany. The city was once a mighty empire, but when it was besieged by an army led by Janus, it fell silent, never to be heard of again. Rumors go around that there's a great vault, I, I mean, a great prize hidden within its walls, and the elders of your tribe sent you to claim it. This is a first person melee action game. You can perform light and heavy attacks, block, and kick to kick your next victim into spike traps to disembowel them. Some weapons like spears and sickles will parry instead of blocking. If you time a parry just right, you can decapitate an enemy in a counter attack. There's also a bonfire, I mean, life-giving fountain, scattered around the world for you to refill your health, level up your character, and respawn all enemies in the world. The core combat is actually quite fun. Enemies are smart and are quite varied. You have undead soldiers hiding behind shields, acrobatic mummies attacking your sickles, and tricky assassins who can disappear waiting for an opportunity to backstab you. There are even scorpions who can take your health bar out with a single sting. When multiple types of enemies are fighting you at the same time, that's when combat gets fierce and challenging. If it gets too hard, you can lower the difficulty of the game. The problem with Elderborn is the lack of weapon variety. While you technically have 8 weapons, they are sorted into 4 groups. Swords, spears, hammers, and dual wielded blades. Weapons in particular groups basically function the same way. The parry weapons also make non-parry weapons obsolete, as they are more effective in murdering enemies with fast attacks enabling you to effectively interrupt enemy combat flow. This makes your swords and hammers redundant, which is a shame. While it may not have the same quality as AAA games, it does offer enough fun and does not overstay its welcome. Choice number 7. The Ambassador, Fractured Timelines. A fast-paced twin-stick fantasy shooter. You play as Gregor, a wizard who can wield a range of weapons and navigate levels using the Time Stop ability to manipulate the flow of combat and solve puzzles. You are responsible for finding out the mysteries of the city of Tamaris' destruction. You'll never get through various environments, fighting off various enemies and bosses, each with its own unique powers and combat mechanics. You'll need to murder all enemies in a level to progress to the next one. There are also collectibles for you to find, they'll provide a history of the realm. Combat is where the game really shines. It is fast-paced, requiring planning, quick reactions, and skill, needing to adapt your skills constantly. As you progress through the game, you'll throw more instances that require you to use your time stop abilities in specific ways. Even though this game is nothing groundbreaking, it is great fun with exciting combat and some unique and interesting mechanics. Choice number 8. Beholder 2. A bureaucratic choose-your-own-adventure simulator. You play as the son of a wealthy and influential department head in a ministry, a massive administrative building. Your father suddenly dies, days before you arrive. Now, you won't do anything else but find out what actually happened to your father till he'll see you climb the ranks of the ministry, from office job dude straight to the top. The plot is really engrossing, as you find little breadcrumbs of your mysterious father. It is about how government bureaucracy can allow evil to grow in its deepest corners and tallest heights, hidden in plain sight. This game plays like a job simulator and old school puzzle point and clickers. You can also make choices for your character. You will begin each floor in the ministry by doing the job assigned to you. This could range from filing reports to more exciting things like cloning. 
They play out as fun mini-games to help you build money and authority, which you'll need for encounters with co-workers and the world. The second major aspect of the game is exploration and puzzle solving. In order to move out the ministry, you have to be promoted. You can either dig up dirt on the boss of each floor and have them fired, or stop all of your other co-workers from being promoted. Or even both. This will involve a lot of talking to everyone, using items, finding solutions, and exploring the world. You can handle the process of eliminating your co-workers however you want, within the constraints of the game. You can get them addicted to drugs, or by helping them find a rich person to marry to make them quit their job. The story and characters in this game are excellent. They are well thought out and writing is clever, sharp, creative, and memorable. Puzzles will see you figuring out what the right items to use is, finding the right place to search, or speaking the right line. Figuring out the puzzles makes you feel very clever. Solutions also make sense, so you're never left feeling like a puzzle is unfair. Beholder 2 will leave you laughing, befuddled, enraged, saddened, and ultimately satisfied. It offers a unique blend of gameplay elements, an interesting narrative and world of engaging characters, strange places, and mysteries waiting to be solved. And that's all for this bundle. This bundle is great for some single and double A games. It isn't the best bundle in the market, but offers enough fun games to play. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.